gold and silver are set to soar, and it's going to happen as soon as the herd. We already know this, but when the herd realizes what we already know, the Fed is painted in a corner when the herd, or part of the herd, just a little bit of the herd, starts to realize gold and silver will start to move up precipitously, when a lot of the herd starts to realize, well, just use your imagination in terms of what that could mean for the price of silver and gold. We got CPI inflation numbers this morning. We're going to talk about that also in this video. And did you know what core CPI is? I didn't. I did some research. If you want to hear about that, keep watching the video. I'm glad you're here. Let's get started right now. We got inflation numbers from our trusted officials at the government this morning. And as I had anticipated, the inflation rate on a year over year basis decelerated down to 8.5% from a 9.1% number last month. The expectation was for it to uh, decelerate to 8.7%. So it smashed beat expectations, however you want to say it. Inflation slowed at a greater pace than was expected. And this month marked an end to 16 months of straight year-over-year -year increases in the inflation rate. It had been going up every month for 16 months. This month, that changed when the rate decreased. Now, I've heard a lot of pundits, right? The smart guys, really, seriously, the smart guys that I respect lately talking about what the Fed really watches is the core inflation rate. That's what they watch. That's what's going to get this pivot that we're all waiting for uh, away from this uber hawkish stance, which will be great news for silver and gold. But what is core inflation? This is really funny, guys. I decided to dig into core inflation and find out what it is. And it's pretty darn simple. Core inflation is just regular inflation. You just take out the inflation rate that is attributed to food, and energy. And I had to laugh because I thought, that's like becoming a major part of every middle American's budget, food and energy. But the Fed wants to ignore that while they're looking at monetary policy. And the reason they like the core inflation number is because it doesn't fluctuate as much, right? Well, no joke. I mean, food and energy, they've been fluctuating. They've been fluctuating straight up. They say that the core inflation rate, the one without food and energy, is more accurate at forecasting trends. Well, here, I don't know what's left after you take out food and energy that the average American's spending their money on. All the stuff at the dollar store? Well, I got news for you. Have you been to the dollar store lately? It's now the $1.25 store. So there, we've got 25% inflation. There's something key we need to talk about regarding these inflation numbers. But before we do that, thank you for being here. Thanks for being in the basement with me. It's just me and you wherever you are in the world. You're always welcome here. If you could subscribe, give the video a thumbs up, turn on the bell notifications, leave a comment below, share the video anywhere you like. Now, what's the key point? that we need to consider about these inflation numbers. The whole premise on this is that as inflation comes down, right, as the Fed is successful in their fight on inflation, they will be able to pivot, I hate that word, but pivot back toward less uber hawkish stance, right? I'm not expecting them, and I don't think anyone is, to go from being uber hawkish to dovish cutting rates immediately, but even as they move away from hawkishness, that will be good for the price of silver and gold because all we've gotten for the last year is hawk, 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 hawk. Now, as they get these numbers coming through showing that they're making headway on the fight in inflation, that will be perceived as good for the price of silver and gold. We saw hints of that this morning, but the key, key thing to remember here, guys, is that, and what the herd doesn't realize, is that the 
Fed is never going to really get ahead of inflation. It was still 8.5%, okay? So let's say over the next couple of months, they get it down to 7.3% or whatever. That's still super high inflation. And the problem with all that, the problem, do you see where I'm going with this? Is if they are able to slow the economy enough to get it to, let's say, 7.3%, they're going to have slowed the economy. We're already seeing signs of that, right? Recession or transition, whatever uh, Janet Yellen wants to call it. So as they make some headway on inflation, they're killing the economy. Well, then they're going to say, well, now we need to focus more on the economy because jobs numbers are down and the jobs numbers will go down. Mark my word, in the coming two to three months, the jobs... The jobs numbers are down. The economy's contracting. We need to focus over there. We're temporarily going to stop our fight on inflation. And now we're going to have to go focus on the economy. And, 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 and when they do that with looser monetary policy, which is good for gold and silver, inflation's going to go back up. And then they're going to have to go over and fight inflation. And then it, it, they're painted in a corner. Remember when you were a kid, there was a video game where you were like a snake and you went around and there was another person, your friend who was a snake and they went around and you tried to surround each other, right? Because the tail stayed with you the whole time. The Fed is in that position when you're playing that game and you realize your friend has surrounded you. The Fed is surrounded, painted in a corner, however you want to say it, by high inflation and a slowing economy. And the word that nobody talks about and is the fact, stagflation. Jeffrey Gunlock, the bond king, said it himself last week. He said everybody's arguing about whether or not we're in a recession and they're ignoring the absolute fact that we are in stagflation. We do have a contra contracting economy and we do have high inflation. Look. This isn't going to end well for the U.S. dollar. This is not going to end well for the Fed. This is most likely going to end well for gold and silver. It very well may take some time, right? Be prepared because in the coming weeks, we'll have the Fed governors coming out, giving speeches and talking more hawkish, right? We're going to have a battle on our hands with gold and silver. But in the end, right, the whole system is underpinned by a bunch of BS, right? Super high deficit, super high debt, uh, all this monetary shenanigans, all this duct tape and, and super glue holding everything together. We know that underneath it all is a mirage. It's like the Wizard of Oz, right? The man behind the curtain. That's what we're dealing with right now. And remember that core CPI we talked about earlier in the video? Well, it also came in lower than expected. So when we start to hear the Fed talking about, well, we need to, we need to pay more attention to the economy, that's our key, right? That the actual pivot has occurred. And it's all a bunch of BS. I like to talk about the three BS T words, T is in Tom, from our leaders, from the Federal Reserve. Remember the first one, inflation is just transitory, right? Most recently, it was Janet Yellen and other you know, economic leaders talking about how the economy is not in a recession, it's in a transition. Next, the word will be temporary. And that's when the Fed says, well, inflation is still really high, but we need to temporarily focus on the economy. They're painted in a corner, folks. It's done, right? The show is most likely up sometime here in the next, who knows, months, years, but it's going to happen. And in the end, gold and silver will maintain their value as they have for thousands and thousands of years, right? They've seen this Wizard of Oz BS show many, many times, many civilizations, 
and they'll continue to hold their value for several more thousand years. Hey, hopefully we'll be around for that whole period, right? But nonetheless, I'll always be here in the basement for you. I appreciate you joining me wherever you are. You're important. Your time's important. Thanks for being here, and I will see you soon. Thank you.